It's Brian Preston, the money guy. It seems highly likely that we are in a recession or headed for a recession or already living in a recession. So if that's the case and if that's true and if that's something we're going to accept as truth, the question we have to answer is, okay, where are we in the process and what does the process look like and what should we be aware of as we think about how we navigate our personal financial lives going through this. Well, yeah, and I, and I want to expand this out, too, because I tell this to, to everybody we work with. We tell this to clients is that we have crossed into bear market status, yep. meaning the markets did cross 20% down the S&P 500. All of them closed down below 20%. And, and it's one of those things when that happens – you need to kind of bottle up your experience so you can figure out how to navigate your way through this because there's so many behavioral lessons to be learned during down markets, during recessions. We want to help you figure out, hey, if we are facing a recession, how should you be, you know, how should you be thinking mentally to prepare yourself to make it through this? And I think the first thing you have to acknowledge is that we are all emotional creatures. If you've been listening to the show for any uh, amount of time, you've heard us talk about specifically when it comes to investing and specifically when it comes to the market and our portfolios and our life savings, we all are susceptible to this cycle of market emotions. And it's sort of like this roller coaster ride of really, really high highs and really, really low lows, but we are horrible at actually assessing where we are in this cycle and recognizing where we actually have the most amount of risk and where we actually have the most amount of opportunity when we're going on this emotional roller coaster ride. Yeah, it, it's so ironic. And this is the, 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 where wealth is made is understanding how to be a contrarian. Mm-hmm. So, you know, because it's easy when markets are making money. It seems like everybody's making money. This is something I explain to people. You can't even tell who's a good financial advisor, who's a good investor, when economies are strong, because the rising tide lifts all boats. That's right. However, as the tide goes out, we see who's really actually can handle, who's done the preparation, who's done the work. And that's the part we are obviously in a, in a period of, of, of the, the market, the economy is going through some pain right now. What we're trying to figure out is because you see from the market cycle, or the, the, the emotional cycle, anxiety, fear, desperation, without a doubt, those things have been felt. However, we don't know if we're at the full capitulation, at the depression, at the point where you actually get your maximum point of financial opportunity. That part, you don't know it kind of until you're looking back in hindsight. And what I think is really interesting is we all, as investors, are uh, affected by the things that we have experienced previously. So a lot of older, wiser investors have been in the markets for a long time. Perhaps they were investing in the late 70s. Perhaps they were investing during the dot-com bubble burst. Perhaps they were investing uh, in the Great Recession. What I think is really unique right now is that the last two major downturns that we saw, at least from a stock market perspective, happened in the fourth quarter of 2018 and then happened in the middle of the pandemic in 2020. Well, for investors who are relatively new to this, who haven't been participating, the thing that they've seen is that this turns quickly, right? Yeah. The downturn of COVID happened so rapidly, and then it corrected and moved positive so quickly that the whole anxiety and fear and depression and panic was super, super contracted. I mean, people were worried about their health. They were scared about other things besides the market. It'll be interesting to see, because none of us know where this is going or how long it'll last. It will be interesting to see what does capitulation actually look like and how will today's investor actually hand that if the market gets to that place? Well, and also I think there's the risk of when you talk about cycles, you know, even in our own illustration, when we talk about a cycle, you'll start at the same point, you'll go up, you'll come down, you'll come back up and you land at the exact Mm -hmm. same place. If you look at even on our cycle of market emotions, optimism will intersect where anxiety mm-hmm. on the way right. back down. Seems like it's, it's zero it's, sum. So it feels like, hey, I just need to figure out where I am in the cycle, get on when there's opportunity, get off when it's overvalued. And I can see how anyone can fall prey to that whole timing trap. But the reality of the situation, and we use this for education, but the reality is is something completely different. We talk about this analogy often. This cycle is actually more like a yo-yo. You're taking. You're an individual throwing a yo-yo up and down. You're really good at a yo-yo. You can walk the dog. <laughs> you can do around the world. But you're doing this yo-yo up and down. 
as you walk up a mountain. So yes, that up and down motion of the yo-yo is the cycle of the economy, mm-hmm. meaning that every day you're watching the market, it's going up da- up and down to where it feels like, man, wh- am I getting ahead on this? But here's the part about why you're walking up a mountain, is that even though you're going up and down in the short term, when you look back after you've gone up 300 yards or whatever, you go, wow, I've made a lot of progress yep. walking up this mountain. That is the way long-term investing is. We use a zero-sum cycle illustration to teach you the points, but the reality is is that we're going higher and higher and higher as the economic expansion, as innovation, as companies learn mm-hmm. how to make more money. That's the reality of the situation. It's one of the reasons that even in our practice, whenever we're showing performance to clients, or when you get your quarterly reports, if you work with us, we actually show your performance since the day you started working with us. And if you've been with us long enough, what we can show is that when we go through, when we do go through times like the Great Recession, or we go through the fourth quarter of 2018, or we go through the COVID pandemic, when you zoom out and see that dip in the context of the grander picture it better allows you to keep your eyes on the long term to recognize that it is in fact a mountain because all we feel in the short term is the yo-yo string. So what you need to understand is, okay, if I understand this yo-yo string is going on, what are the things I should keep an eye on? If, if this is a recession or if things are going to be painful before they become less painful, what are some indicators I should be aware of? Or what are some things I can start cluing into to make myself better understand where we are in the economic and, cycle. And I want to give you these indicators, but also I, I want to tell this because I need to I need this to be repeated a few times throughout this show. If you're in your 20s, your 30s, 40s, I mean, really, anybody who's still got 10 to 15 years before you retire, I want you to think about always be buying. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I know this stuff is emotionally scary, but as I as we go over all the canaries, all the things you should be paying for in the economy so that you will have indicators of the, where we are in the cycle, it shouldn't matter mm-hmm. on your behavior because we're just giving you the analytics to process this well, but you're just going to buy at the beginning through the middle, and through the through the next cycle of expansion, as well as where we walk, throw the yo-yo up and down, you're just going to be buying through the entire process. Now, look, we don't want to sound tone deaf. We understand that there are things going on in your life that may affect that. Obviously, if there are layoffs and there are things like that going, or if your income is down because perhaps it's driven by the economic cycles, yeah, there might be times where you have to pause your saving yeah, or you have that. to pull back. But so long as you can control it, it's different to make that decision out of necessity because of your circumstance versus out of emotion because of your fear. If you can train yourself to be a financial mutant, to recognize that in these moments when everything is on sale and everything's down 10, 15, 19, 20, 25, maybe even 35%, Man, that might be an awesome opportunity that so long as I can stay the course, I am getting an amazing deal on those soldiers I'm putting in my army of dollar bills. That is the mindset we want you to have as you move through whatever we're going to face over the next three, four, five, six, 10, 12 months. Yeah, I mean, I'll kind of close it out with I'm old enough now that I've been through the dot com. I've been through the Great Recession, been through this pandemic, and there's not a dollar that I invested, especially in those that have had enough time to make it through the full cycle, whether we're talking about the dot-com, yep. even the, the money I bought in in March of 2000, as well as the money I bought into, whether it's November of 2008 or March of 2009, which were those big crushing blows to the financial markets. Those all seem super cheap Mm -hmm. by relative terms now because we've had such big, long expansions and recoveries. 